So EBV, it's easy to catch, but very difficult for conventional medicine to figure out what's going on with you. So in our last video, we went through Ben's healing timeline. And then in the previous video, we went through his chronic illness story leading up to finding medical medium and all of the experience we went through with conventional medicine. In this video, we're gonna get into the specifics on how we healed his Epstein-Barr virus. So if you didn't see our previous two videos, I was really sick and I was going from doctor to doctor to doctor and not getting any answers that I was looking for. All conventional medicine wanted to do was pro provide me with another ineffective treatment, which then, you know, made me worse. Um, conventional medicine, you know, they only know of, of two varieties of Epstein-Barr virus, which is what I was dealing with when there's actually 60 varieties of Epstein-Barr virus. And medical medium, he made them aware of the second variety of Epstein-Barr that they now talk about. But pr prior to that, they only knew about one, one variety. And they still don't know the long-term effects of Epstein-Barr virus and how it works in our body. And how problematic it is, right? Yep. And how it causes a lot of problems, a lot of chronic illness and mystery symptoms, mystery disease. This Epstein-Barr virus is behind all of that. So in this video, we're not going to go into detail on the origins of Epstein-Barr, the transmissions, the types, the stages, the life cycles, or how it feeds. But you can find all of that information in Anthony's um, first book, Medical Medium. So go check that out. We are going to go into how to heal from Epstein-Barr, also known as EBV. So the foods that feed viruses that we eliminated from our diet were eggs, gluten, dairy, corn, citric acid, canola oil, and processed beet sugar. So viruses, you know, viruses, they feed, right? We just talked about the foods they feed off of, but they also feed off of environmental toxins, environmental toxins like heavy metals and radiation and DDT. And so when we looked at that, we were like, okay, well, what foods contain these things in them? Because we, we're going to want to eliminate those too, so we're not feeding the virus through those foods, right? So the way that, that these environmental toxins work in our body is when we have these environmental toxins in the body, those toxins get stored in fat cells in our body, right? So when we consume meat... Meat is high in fat, meaning all the toxins that are in that, that animal are getting stored in their fat cells, which then we are consuming, which is then putting those environmental toxins in our body. So mm -hmm. not only are fats a problem when you're trying to heal and trying to detox, but the fat is basically bringing in all these environmental toxins that we want to rid of our body. So we eliminated all meat, all meat products. Um, we started to look at the labels on like stuff we were buying from the store and you know started to realize that MSGs are actually a bad thing and these these MSG labels have been basically relabeled and just called something different but it still has that same toxic MSG product in it like natural flavoring or artificial flavoring or artificial sweeteners stuff like that that you see on the labels are actually toxic for you because all those things contain heavy metals in them yeah, so anytime you see something that says like flavor, maybe it says like lemon flavor, it's really an MSG, so don't be fooled by that. And I also wanted to say, so we recently kind of learned that pretty much everything you eat is going to have heavy metals in it because heavy metals are just kind of everywhere. So even plants or the plants that you're growing in your garden are gonna have heavy metals because it comes down from the sky and the rain goes in the soil, the plants absorb that, 
So even if you're plant-based, you're absorbing metals in your fruits and veggies. However, as Ben said, with like meat, it gets stored in those fat cells. So that's what makes it so much worse for you with the heavy metals if you're comparing the two. And plants offer so much more healing properties to them that it's gonna help outweigh the heavy metal intake. Yeah, fat, uh, plants don't have the fat content that meat does. So those right. environmental toxins aren't gonna be stored like they would be in meat with plants. So we started doing the medical medium heavy metal detox smoothie once we learned more about how much heavy metals get in our body on a daily basis and how much we probably consumed our whole life. Yeah, and we started to look into like, well, what are we eating, you know? Um, are we consuming fruit and veggies right now? And are we making sure that we're buying organic? Because, you know, if you don't buy organic, then you risk that that fruit or that vegetable might have been sprayed with, you know, pesticides, DDT, insecticides, fungicides, larvicides, herbicides. herbicides. And those all have heavy metals in them. Yep. So all contain toxic heavy metals. And then that food, just like animals you know animals drink water well the water they're probably drinking contains you know fluoride or chlorine or toxic heavy metals in it the plants also get sprayed or also get water Weird. right so that water might contain the same stuff and then you know that's getting on the plants too but that's something you can't really help it's just something you you, you got to deal with and, and then detox with the smoothie exactly you protect yourself and then we also made sure that the stuff we were buying wasn't genetically modified because GMO foods your body doesn't know how to process GMO foods they look at a genetically modified food as a non-living entity and yeah. immediately push it out of the body and tag it as you know a toxic thing yeah sees it as like a foreign object in your body yep. pretty much so that's not everything that we have eliminated from our diet to really clean things up we also eliminated soy soft drinks sugar and by sugar i don't mean fruit fruit and sugar are two different things the sugar in fruit is really good for you it's glucose by sugar i mean cane sugar we still do like maple syrup, honey, um, coconut sugar, things like that. Or artificial sh sugars. Yeah, you don't want the artificial sugars. Um, and then we eliminated fermented foods. Vinegar is a big one. And then caffeine. So like coffee, matcha tea, and chocolate. And cacao. And cacao. Yeah. yeah. And then there's like food chemicals, like an alcohol... Um, nutritional yeast, uh, aspartame, and preservatives. So we eliminated a lot of stuff. We did. <laughs> yeah. We even eliminated grains. Well, not all grains, right? Not completely. Right? We limited our grains. And um, if we do grains, it would be like oats or millet. Um, like wheat is a wheat is a pretty big grain that a lot of people consume. Well, wheat is also a highly genetically modified crop. And it so has the gluten. Has the gluten in it as well. So a lot of these the 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 GMO foods we eliminated and a lot of the grains unfortunately have gluten so we had to eliminate those, but you know, oats is a good one and millet. And yeah. those are probably the two grains you can continue yeah. to eat on the medical medium. Yeah, and quinoa is okay. It's just really hard on the digestive system. So it's not, we just avoid it. And we just, yeah, we do. Sometimes like in a blue moon, we'll do brown rice. That's okay too. Um, but yeah, like he said, oats and millet are like the top two like best grains to have. Yeah, and then we... A lot of people were asking this in the last video. Well, do you do you like limit your salt consumption? What do you do for salt? Yeah, we you we know. definitely yeah <laughs> we limit it yeah for sure. And once we read more about salt in Cleanse to Heal when it came out last year, 
we were like way more conscious of it and you know making dishes trying to eliminate the salt and add more herbs for flavor yeah. or more lemon or lime because that's a really good substitute for that saltiness in a dish yeah you can make some really good potatoes without salt and you just use you know herbs as your seasoning and it's awesome mm-hmm